Good morning, brothers and sisters, depending on where you're joining from. The Almighty God bless you. Welcome to the Surefire Life Conference, the platform the Almighty God has given us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through him. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus himself made that statement as clearly as so. And that is the truth. And that's what we are here to do today. We are kicking off a very special program with the theme, the redeemed of the Lord. If you are not yet the redeemed of the Lord, before the end of this program, you will be one. And so may I ask all the redeemed of the Lord to join me and shout, the redeemed of the Lord. And again, shout, I am the redeemed of the Lord. You are indeed the redeemed of the Lord. The objective of this program is simple. It is to make known to everyone, whoever cares, the power and the provision of God available to those who are the redeemed of the Lord, that we may have the fullness of God's blessing for our lives during our journey here on earth and spend that eternal life with God as he has ordained it to be through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to start this teaching right away. And I want to start by reminding us of what is recorded in the book of Luke chapter 11. I believe verses 27 and 28. Something happened there. In the entire book of Luke chapter 11, or even all the way from 10, uh, Jesus Christ was teaching and he was speaking, confirming, and the word was being confirmed with a whole lot of signs and wonders. It was that same Luke chapter 11, if you remember, I often talk about it, that he talked about in verse 13, that the Holy Spirit is available to everyone who asks the Father to give him or her, the Holy Spirit. And he continued and cast out demon from a child that was mute. And when the demon left, the mute spoke. He continued and talked about the kingdom of God. That in verse 20, he talked about the kingdom of God coming to us, coming to the disciples, coming to the people that were hearing him. As the crowd heard the word, a woman in the crowd in verse 27 shouted, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts which nurse you. <laughs> but Jesus answered her and said, much more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and do it. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, make this program a very personal program to yourself. And I pray one more time that the Holy Spirit will unlock the keys, the principles of heaven that are meant for the redeemed of the Lord, for you, that the rest of your life, the rest of my life, the rest of our lives, we shall enjoy the power and the provisions of God that are meant for the redeemed of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So our topic today is the redeemed of the Lord. And we will continue this topic throughout this week and we'll follow up with the final teaching and ministration on the 26th, 26th September. 
We are going to continue daily with fasting and prayer, and we will have short period of teaching on a specific aspect, and then we will follow up with prayer. The redeemed of the Lord. Our text is taken from Isaiah 35, verse 10. The redeemed of the Lord. Several scriptures make reference to the redeemed of the Lord or the ransomed of the Lord. The redeemed of the Lord or the ransomed of the Lord. And we've talked about the Isaiah chapter 35, verse 10. If you also go to that same Isaiah chapter 35, verse 9b, the Bible says that, but the redeemed shall walk there. But the redeemed shall walk there. Where shall the redeemed walk? He shall walk in this special blessing, this special part. So I just read from verse 8. A highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Nine. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Following that is verse 10 that we have read. And the ransomed of the Lord and the redeemed of the Lord shall return to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow, and sighing, and I add, and disappointment, and failure, and whatever stress there is in this life, and evil shall flee away from us, the redeemed of the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. In Psalm 107, Psalm 107, I want you to look at it, Psalm 107, Psalm 107, verse 2. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let's pause a little and make the point here. When we are talking about being redeemed, it means that there was an unpleasant situation that one may have been. One may have been in captivity. One may have been in bondage. One may have been in a detrimental state. And that is where redeemed or redemption comes to apply. And so the first Bible portion that we refer to in Isaiah chapter 35, as you know, when you go and read the whole of Isaiah, it was a situation where the children of Israel were in a very, like people would say, precarious situation. They were suffering. There was disobedience in the land, and God allowed hardship to visit them, famine to visit them, their enemies to rule over them, a whole lot of things they suffered. And prophet Isaiah gave this word that the redeem of the Lord will return. Can you see now? They will return and come to Zion. Note, at times of people who put and say, will return to Zion. No, they will return. They will return from their captivity. They will return from their bondage and suffering. They will return from the slavery. That's the context of that scripture. And come to Zion. Zion is representing God, the place God has appointed for them. Jerusalem, the place God has appointed for them. The redeemed of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with joyful shouting. I say somebody here after today. And as we continue in this program, there shall be joyful shouting in your life. There shall be joyful shouting in your house as you understand the power and the blessings and the provision of the redeemed of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
And the scripture continues that they shall carry everlasting joy upon their head. And that's why I decree and declare over you and over myself and over our lives, according to the word of God that never fails, that your head from now on carries the everlasting joy of God. My head carries the everlasting joy of God. The head of everyone in your family carries the joy, the everlasting joy of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So when we talk about the redeemed or being redeemed, it means there was a, a, a detrimental situation, a suffering, a pain, a bondage, a captivity. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, we talk about the redeemed or being redeemed. Brothers and sisters, the entire human race was in this precarious captivity, in this slavery, slavery that the devil has put on mankind through sin. And God, at the appointed time, sent his son, Jesus Christ, through whom he has redeemed mankind. And so everyone, that has come to God through Jesus Christ, or come to Jesus the way, the truth, and the lie, becomes the redeemed of the Lord. So now let's read the Bible. You understand the context. Let's get deep into it. We want to do Bible reading a bit. I want to take our first Bible reading from Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 21. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 21. But we're going to start reading from verse 8. Somebody else open to Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 and 17. Okay, Romans chapter 5. We'll start reading from verse 8. I'll read very quickly. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Verse 15. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like, like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Verses 18 and 19. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even through one man's righteousness, one, one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. 19, the last verse. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. I repeat 18 and 19 again. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, 
the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. All glory be to God. Let's pick some key words from here. First, Adam. And on the side of Adam, you see a key word there. Sin, disobedience, and sinner. Sin, disobedience, and sinner. And then, on the other hand, we have Jesus Christ. And we see there righteousness, obedience, and righteous. Praise the name of the Lord. So, this is, or this was the state of humanity. But God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem humanity from this state. So how did man get into this pitiable state? That is what Genesis chapter 2 that we talked about 15 and 17, and then 3, 1 to 19, tells us. So let's look at Genesis. Chapter 2. I will read 15 to 17, and somebody else, you will read 3, 1 to 19. Genesis 2 from 15. Then the Lord God took man, took the man, and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Please, somebody feel free, open your line and read Genesis chapter 3, very quickly, verses 1 to 19. It's a long read, but this is the foundation we must have. All right, Sonny, you are on. Please go ahead. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Verse 5, For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat for seven. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked mm -hmm. and, they, and they saw thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. First nine. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? How thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Mm -hmm. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. 
And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. For 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it uh, in all the days of thy life. Verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for thou thou art, and unto thus shalt thou return. Praise the Lord. So here we see clearly the disobedience of man and how sin came into the world. And through sin, curse came and death came. Let's say that again. Here we've seen how disobedience, through disobedience, sin came into the world. And through sin, curse, suffering, pain, death came into the world. And who caused all this? The serpent. And who is this serpent here? I believe everybody will call us Satan, the devil. How do we know that? The Bible exposes him. And you see, he was very sneaky here as he also attacks the seed of Adam, even till today. It's only when one comes to Jesus that the head of the serpent is bruised. Hallelujah. And we get out. This is what redemption, redemption means. The redeemed. The redeemed of the Lord is one that is delivered, saved from all this evil that came upon man. So here, man became eternally separated from God. Man lost fellowship with God. Disobedience brought sin, and sin is separation from God, and suffering and death came in through sin. And the devil brought all this. The devil tricked Eve. The devil lied to Eve, for the devil is a liar. That is his duty. He lies. And that's what the devil continues to do to the whole world today. He lies. He will tell you, Jesus is not the son of God. He lies. He will tell you, Jesus cannot heal you. He lies. He will tell you, are you sure? Just like he asked Adam, um, Eve here. Yeah. Just as he asked Eve, did God say you shall not eat? Did God say? And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Tricks. The devil is a trickster. So let's look quickly at Revelation to confirm that this same serpent is Satan. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. 
he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Also in Revelation chapter 20, verse 2, Revelation 20, verse 2, See what the Bible say. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Finally, let's look at Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Let's look at verses 12 through 17. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, God says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Did you see that? You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. The devil was created by God. So here, and it was not created devil, it was created as you have seen, with beauty, with wisdom. Let's continue verse 14. You were the anointed cherub. Can you hear that? The anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within you, within, and you sinned, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I, almighty God, speaking, cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. Time will fail us, we would have gone to read uh, one more scripture, uh, I believe Isaiah chapter 14 or thereabout. But let's move on. So the serpent is Satan. And what does this then tell us? That Satan brought sin into the world through Adam's Adam and Eve's disobedience, but Adam is held accountable. God gave the instruction to Adam. So Satan brought sin into the world through Adam, and sin brought death and all the sufferings that accompanies death, including sickness and diseases and poverty and all the wickedness that are going on in the world. The absence of joy, the absence of peace. And so when we're talking about the redeemed of the Lord, therefore we're talking about the restoration from this despicable, detrimental, hopeless state of man through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With this, let's go back then and read Romans chapter 5 and make a few points. But before we read Romans chapter 5, some words around redeem, definition. I've already used a number of words. From what we have read so far, we have seen reconciliation. We have seen restoration. We have seen repurchase. So something that you lost or took a loan, right? Maybe you take your property. And you say, ah, it's hard with me now. So I keep this my property and I collect something, you know, collect maybe money, took a loan. Your property is kept as a shorty. When you pay back that money, you take your property, you redeem your property. So that is how God has redeemed us from Satan, from sin, 
And therefore, all the sufferings that came into the world through Satan and sin. Praise the name of the Lord. So another word for redeem is also to repair, to repair. It means to rescue. It means to save. It means to deliver. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. As we have seen in 107 verse 2, remember we read, it said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. There is a responsibility on the redeemed of the Lord in order to appropriate the blessing of the redeemed to say so, to declare so, to make himself or herself so. Glory be to God. I was just speaking to somebody this morning. And I hope you have been keeping your assignment. You know, one of the assignments we, we took last in the conclusion of last teaching was that you should evangelize. Speak to somebody about Jesus, the one through whom God has redeemed us, has redeemed humanity, redeemed humankind, saved the world. Speak to somebody because that's the way to continue to bear much fruit, praise the Lord, amongst other services that we render to humanity for the sake of God. Yes, yeah, so I was speaking to somebody and I said, are you born again? He said, yes, I'm born again. What does it mean to be born again? He started uh, stuttering, but I then told him, the problem is not being born again, but what you do with being born again. Having been born again, what do you do? Do you know you have been redeemed? Do you know the power of God that is with you and available to you. What do you do with it? That's the Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Because many at times will be saying, ah, why did God not just beat the devil out? How come they try to excuse themselves? I want to teach us on the law of servitude. Everybody say with me, the law of servitude. This is, we are going to consider two principal laws. We may add a third one, but... This is a principal law that you, in this series and during this program, the law of servitude. Note that down. The law of servitude is there in your Bible. Romans chapter 6. Let's read from verse 14 all the way to 16. So the law of servitude is captured in verse 16. It's the spiritual law that operates. That's why when people take themselves to the shrine or a father takes something and goes and does something, it affects the children. Read it with me from verse 14. It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. 15, what then shall we, what then shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. 16, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves, slaves, Servants to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of disobedience leading to righteousness. So the law of servitude simply says who you subject yourself to, he becomes your master. You become the slave, you become. So that's what happened to human race. So Satan tricked Adam, whom God gave authority over the earth. You remember? God brought everything to Adam and whatever Adam named, whatever Adam called, that is the name they bear, that is the character they demonstrate. All that power, all that authority for the devil to be able to take over this world, he had to subject Adam to himself. So Adam became subjected to the devil by obeying the devil and disobeying God. And that is how the devil came into the world. That is how sin came into the world. And that is how the devil has perpetrated his evil deeds all over the world. So for those of you who keep thinking that you can make the world better, you are deceiving yourself. Look at it. Everybody keeps talking about the Good old days, good old days. As much as the world is advancing in technology, the world gets worse every day because this world has been condemned. By the sin of Adam, as we read in Romans chapter 5, the world has been condemned. But God has sent his son to redeem humankind 
and the world. This is what it means to be redeemed. It is to come to Jesus Christ, the one God has sent to redeem mankind. So let's read verses 18 and 19 again of Romans chapter 5. Verses 18 and 19, Romans chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men. Came is in past tense, came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. So by Adam's disobedience, everyone born into the world, according to the natural birth of Adam, is a sinner, and therefore is under the oppression of the devil, and the devil uses sin to oppress man. The only way out is for God to send his son in the likeness of man. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. That will be our last verse, 14, from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2. Read it with me from verse 14. It has much then. As the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So I want to conclude in this introductory teaching, because we're going to now continue every day, taking one aspect and dealing with it. The liberty that God has given you will manifest in your life. There is no devil, no power of sin that can stop Jesus from giving you the victory. In the name of Jesus. And hear this point clearly. Once the issue of sin and the power of Satan have been dealt with, death and sickness and diseases, have been removed from our lives. Once the issue of sin and the power of Satan have been dealt with, death and sickness and diseases and all the accompanying issues, problems of sin and death have been removed from our lives. But this is only available to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. And of course, you know, the same Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Sorry, uh, three, I believe, three. Yes, 23. Romans chapter 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And we know that the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God, that's Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So through Jesus Christ, God has sent his redemption to settle the issue of sin and to destroy the devil and the power of the devil. Those who come to God, who come to Jesus, are therefore translated into the kingdom of God where Jesus rules. In the course of this teaching, we will be dealing with this kingdom. And you will understand that though you are in this world, though I am in this world, I am no more of the world. You are no more of the world. And the devil can do you nothing. The devil can do me nothing. The devil can do us nothing. But Jesus, the king of the kingdom of God, is with us. Hallelujah. Once the issue of sin and the power of Satan have been dealt with, death and
and sickness and diseases and all the suffering that came through sin have been removed. Now, this is only available to those who are in Christ Jesus, who are the redeemed of God, who have been restored to the life that God had always intended for man to have in Eden. For man to have the spirit of God and have fellowship with God continually. This is the state and the life of the redeemed. The Almighty God bless you as you have listened to this word. We want to pray right away. Prayer number one is everyone, you're connected here. If you have not come to Jesus, there are no two ways about it. So let us pray. Surrender your life to Jesus now. You understand this, the cause of your suffering on earth, the cause of your pain and problems on earth is Satan and sin. That's it, Satan and sin. The cause of all the problems of the whole world, that's it, Satan and sin. And God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem the world, redeem you, redeem me. And so open your mouth and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sin, to pay the price, to purchase me, to redeem me. I surrender my life to you, almighty God. I ask, Lord, forgive me through the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash me, cleanse me. I repent of my sins. And I promise, Lord, I will serve you. I will not go back to sin. Take away sin from me. Destroy the power of sin. Deliver me from the power of Satan. And now, Father, go. In the name of Jesus, give me your Holy Spirit. Transform my life. Redeem me, restore me to that glory, that blessing, that fellowship, that life you have ordained for me and for all your children that you have redeemed through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus for saving me. I'm so glad, I'm so grateful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You now own my body, my soul, my spirit. Thank you, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Now let's raise our voices to God together and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding me and teaching me that I have been redeemed from sin and from the power of Satan I've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of peace, the kingdom of the blessings of God, where Jesus is the king, rule over me. Lord Jesus, I surrender to your rulership. You are the Lord of my life. And now, Father God, let everlasting blessing that you have kept for me in this life, the destiny of my life as you have designed it, take place now in my life. Take place, take place. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer for yourself. Keep it that straight. Father, by your redemption, let your destiny for my life be activated now. That everything I do, hands for, will please you, will glorify you, will honor you. My life will please you, God. I will fulfill your purpose and your will for my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. And thank you for all the lives that you have saved today. Thank you for the redemption that you have given to us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have been redeemed from the power of Satan, from the power of sin. We have been delivered. And all the problems and issues that came from sin and the devil have been removed from our lives. Sickness and diseases have been removed. Sin has been removed. Since sin has been dealt with, the power of the devil has been broken, has been destroyed. We have eternal life. We have the blessings of God. And now, Lord God Almighty, we ask, let that blessing, let that goodness, let that your mercy, your favor overtake us. Is there anyone here who has been having the symptom of sickness and diseases? Almighty God, by your redemption power, let that brother, let that sister be healed now. Is there anyone that has been under the oppression of the devil, the trickster? Father God, by your redemption power, in the name of Jesus, let the deliverance 
the oppression cease now in that life. Let the deliverance that we have received through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ manifest in the life of every one of these your children right now. Whatever is the challenge, the difficulty, the suffering that your children have experienced, now let the joy of the Lord overtake everyone connected upon this platform. Thank you, our Father and our God. To you be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have agreed. Amen.